There's lots to get to. Holy smoke, Ronies, let's get to it. First, we're going to start in Toronto. Ryan O'Connor says, back up or we F you, says the thug protester. Protester. I mean, like, that's not even, it's not a protester. That's a, that's a, just a thug, full stop, right? That person is absolutely not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're just threatening people on an ice rink. They're not even wearing skates. Although it would be kind of funny if the protesters themselves like skated up, put their skates on before they went protesting, uh, but they're not obeying any of the rules at all. Here's a, here's a little bit of the video of what's going on. This is from Six Buzz TV, and here we go from the beginning here. Don't touch me, don't, do not touch me, do not touch me. You touch me, don't touch me. Don't, you literally touch me, back the fuck away. Are you assaulting people? Back the fuck away. Shame on you! Goodness me. Wow, right? They're just browbeating these people. The guy said, back up or we F you. And that's weird, right? That's a strange way to threaten somebody on an ice rink when you're not on ice skates. And isn't that just like threatening? Can you do that? Could a Canadian trucker do that? City of Toronto invited p people to City Hall skating rink Sunday for a skate with Mayor Olivia Chow. This is what happened to an elderly couple who went. They're skating. The protesters aren't. A safety issue to say nothing of the harassment of the couple. Where was security? <laughs> Nowhere to be seen. Car Carmaya was there too. She says, chaos on the ice as protesters face off against skaters. And like, not great, right? Not great at all. Here's Dean. He says, Toronto police do nothing. Absolutely nothing is this is happening. Michelle says, while you're skating, bombs are dropping and people are chanting that. Here's video of that. I mean, people are skating, right? <laughs> so, I mean, your chant is kind of falling on uh, deaf ears. Here's Olivia Chow. This is the cringiest cringe this year so far. The Post Millennial says, an anti-Israel protester disrupts her skating party. Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow tells them, I agree, you've seen my message about ceasefire, right? <sighs> right, oh my gosh. As, as they keep shouting, she says, what you're seeing is democracy in action. And it's interesting. My goodness, it's, this is unbelievable. This is unthinkable 10 years ago, but here we are, right? Here we go. Can you imagine Mel Lastman putting up with this? Nobody. Okay. I, I do agree. You've seen my, you've seen my message about ceasefire, right? So why don't you let me uh, continue? Anyway, today we are the the life belong. Well, this is how you, when you say it's democracy in action. And um, this is not There is another 30 seconds in this minute long cringe fest. <laughs> Holy smoke. We'll keep watching because it just keep I mean I think we've I think we've seen all of the really bad parts but it's just continues to be this bad. The ceasefire now oh, the security is now here to su to support Mayor Chow, but the people are overpowering her and she just keeps talking and the whole thing <laughs> is just, all, it's like your worst nightmare of a press conference, right? It reminds me of the beginning of Bridget Jones's diary where she's introducing somebody and the microphone doesn't work for her. So she just yells it and she gets, she kind of flubs it and it's really, it's kind of a bad intro. Anyway, um, here's the rest of this 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she tries to be diplomatic. That's not going to work. Sorry, sorry, Mayor Chow. They're not there to be diplomatic. That's not the point. Andy Lee is responding to Mayor Chow, who after this whole train wreck says, some good fun at today's New, Year le New Year's levy and skating party. Looking forward to a great year ahead. <laughs> Unreal. Andy Lee says, uh, yeah, you were actually mobbed and run off the rink by Hamas terrorist supporters. We all saw it, but let's just call it some good fun and pretend nothing bad happened. Welcome to Canada. Oh my gosh. Cringe, 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 cringe. Ross McLean, McLean is responding to Chief of Police of Toronto. Chief Myron D is 
posted this letter. He says, yesterday, Saturday, January 6th, officers managed approximately a half dozen demonstrations, including on multiple overpasses. Questions have been raised regarding one particular interaction between officers and a person on Avenue Road Bridge during an hours long demonstration. Whatever the intent, the impact has been to cause concern and confusion. And for that, I'm sorry. I immediately convened command meetings and ordered a thorough review of the day's events and to ensure that most effective operational planning and responses are in place. Let me be clear and unequivocal. Our commitment to keeping our city's Jewish community safe is unwavering. We are doing everything we can in the locations that have been targeted for demonstration to uphold and enforce the law. Since the early days following October 7th, the Toronto Police Service has maintained a strong presence in Jewish neighborhoods to ensure the safety and security of Jewish institutions, including day schools and synagogues. These resources will remain in place for the foreseeable future, our officers have worked tirelessly to manage the most almost 300 demonstrations since October 7th, events which have been both planned and unplanned, which number from several dozen to more than 25,000 people. We understand the disruption and concern for safety many of these demonstrations have caused, and when laws are broken, we will intervene to ensure our city is safe. Well, I mean, kind of, but they've been on camera not enforcing the law in certain situations. The Adam Skelly situation, I don't think basic rights were upheld there. Um, Costco people could go into Costco and and shop, et cetera, buy food at the Costco counter, but they couldn't go into Adam Skelly's barbecue. And they brought mounted units for that and, and charged him for it. Unbelievable, right? Just unbelievable. And then we have mass protests that are calling for the death of certain people, so on and so forth, still violating the law. And nobody, the police are saying, we're gonna do our best to protect the Jewish community from people who are breaking the law and calling for <laughs> harm to come to these people. So that's bad, right? Like, and in Canada, generally, uh, we're live and let live kind of people, right? Like, believe what you want, live and let live. Although, I think that that is very much changing at this point in time, and people are um, starting to pay attention to the people in power because the people in power are ignoring the citizens and working for globalists, it seems. Anyway, the Toronto police are responding to the criticism for the coffee delivery for the Hamas protesters yesterday. And it's good that they're feeling pressure, but I think just the response generally from the police dealing with the law breaking that has been done has been poor. And it's, it's very similar to the healthcare system, the education system, all of these institutions justice system, the court system more than the policing. But now it seems that the policing as well has been watered down to the point of the police are bothering you if you post mean memes, but if you engage in violent protest, threatening people's security, threatening people's property, then, well, it depends on, it depends on what you're doing. If you're protesting for Canadian freedom and Canadian basic rights, then we're going to crush you with the Emergencies Act. If you're protesting for Palestine or for Israel or for Ukraine or for, well, not so much Russia, but you get my point, anywhere but Canada, then, you know, live and let live. You can protest as long as you like and you can say whatever you want. It's pretty wild. So people are getting sick and tired of their formerly It felt like the government worked for you to a degree. It felt like while you didn't always get what you wanted, you got kind of a version of it-ish. I mean, the McGinty years were pretty terrible. The the politics have been pretty terrible in, in the West for a long time. It's not like George Bush was loved. It's not even like Bill Clinton was really loved while he was in office and, and before that and so on and so forth, right? Like it, it's not like these people are perfect and they're running it perfectly. And, you know, oh, the the olden days in the 1990s and 1980s were perfect. I mean, they're far from perfect. We had some pretty major debt crises. Um, the NDP bankrupt Ontario, right? Like things were things were very Ray days. Do you remember Ray days? Things were not dicey, but I mean, different. And the problems were different, right? And and so like, but it seemed then like the people were more, had more of a say. The politicians worried what the people thought and they wouldn't do certain things. Although, again, looking back, the multiculturalism thing that was passed in 1987, that's damaging in a way that you wouldn't pick up for 20, 30, 40 years, right? And here we are, 2024, 35 years into it. And yeah, you're picking up how damaging this policy is. It doesn't doesn't lead to cohesive, uh, united country, 
right? It leads to open borders and ghettos and tent cities and poverty, and that's not good. And so we should repeal these bad policies. It's the same with the drug policy, right? Oh, let's give addicts drugs, they say. That's going to help save addicts' lives, and we should stop what um, branding addicts as bad. Well, when you take a poison and you die, people who love you are very sad and it could have been prevented. We shouldn't probably hand out the poison that leads to these people's deaths. And when you look at the stats, before the government was paying for drugs, we had less overdose deaths than we do now after a government's handing out drugs. So this policy has failed. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care. They'll double down, triple down on bad policy. People are sick and tired of it. And they're rising up. And before we saw in Canada, the truckers, and in order to stop the truckers, the government uh, falsely used the War Measures Act, the Emergencies Act against their own people because Justin Trudeau was afraid of losing power and he damn well should have. And now it's happening in Germany and I hope they don't stop. I hope they, I hope they accept nothing less than the resignation of the government, the full resignation. And the people there should take a caretaker government and investigate and create a plan for secure elections of the German people and only German people and start deporting people. I mean, honestly, there there is a solution. But then you're going to start a war with the rest of the globalists, right? As soon as that happens, Germany is going to become the bad guy again, right? Like, oh my gosh, they're trying to start World War II again, those Germans, those Nazis or whatever they're going to call them. It'd be convenient. But you see what I'm saying? If you took control, they will do everything in the press to vilify you and they'll come and try and crush you. Look at what happened to Gaddafi. He was trying to get off. He was trying to put a currency onto the gold standard. They said, no mas, buddy, not going to happen. Anyway, Peter Sweden is talking about this. He says, it's happening. The farmers have begun arriving in Berlin for mass protests tomorrow. So you're seeing, oops, sorry, I don't mean to honk the horns at you. I'll turn that down. Oh, that's me. Oops, wrong one. Hold on. I'll turn this one down. <laughs> so there's... Lots of people honking away, honking away, coming in. Jim Ferguson, he's a UK guy. He says, Germany is being brought to a complete standstill as the people push back against the globalists. If this goes truly international, it could see their governments collapse as Klaus Schwab and his WEF cultists lose their grip on power. So yeah, it does seem very culty. It seems very, very culty indeed. Here's Peter Sweden again. He says, this is massive hundreds of tractors in a convoy in huge farmer protests in Germany. The mainstream media won't show you this video. And you can see long stretch of highway snaking up the side of a, a hill, I guess, going around a big corner. And there's miles of these people, right? And they're driving. I mean, I don't know how fast they're driving. They're not driving highway speed, maybe 70 kilometers an hour. That's just a, that's just a guess. But right, there's a lot of people coming into Berlin. There's a lot of people coming in to tell the government, no way. Here's Nick. And Nick says, German farmers protesting the government have taken this to a new level. North America media fails to report the German citizens are fighting back against government that failed to listen to its citizens. Trudeau doesn't want you to see this. Uh, yeah, probably not. Probably not because it legitimizes the protests that the, the Canadian truckers did. I wish they had a higher, like, I wish the drone flew higher. But this looks like a major overpass or, you know, seven, seven to... Seven, seven lanes across, three on this side, three on this side, and then there's another lane over here. Like It's like three plus a HOV lane type deal um, filled with tractors going all in the one direction. So that's, I mean, that's a lot of people, right? Again, I wish I could see uh, I, more of it. Here's Peter Sweden again. He says, convoy with thousands of tractors on the German Autobahn stretching as far as the eye can see. No farmers, no food. So that seems to be a usual slogan. Christine Anderson is um, talking about this and she's a German MEP. She's visited Canada a bunch of times, done tours, done events and a whole bunch of stuff to promote freedom in Canada and, and Germany, etc. And she says, here we go again, German legacy media and the established parties, aka the anti-people parties are lashing out against the protesting farmers, calling them a motorized pitchfork mob and labeling them right-wing extremists, violent anti-constitutionalists, insurrectionists. You complete the list, you know the deals, you know the deal by now, but racism, right? Sexists, white supremacists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Been there, done that, and we don't care anymore. I firmly stand with the German farmers, and she's got hashtags that uh, 
uh, our German farmer hashtags, and I support them wholeheartedly. Criticizing government and showing your discontent by protesting is not only anti democratic, not only not anti democratic, on the contrary, it is the very definition of demo democracy, and it's how democracy should work. And so that's. I agree with that. And Eva says, Goosebumps just witnessed countless German farmers on their tractors making their way onto the highway, backed by a huge convoy of German truckers. This is the most amazing thing that I've seen in a while. This is how you show your government who's boss. And here is Melissa, and she's reporting on January 7th at 1.40 in the afternoon. Polish truckers headed to Germany to support mass protests organized by German farmers starting tomorrow. So that's interesting as well. And Son of a Bench says Germany is calling on the Dutch farmers to join them in the farmer tractor protest. Polish truckers have already stepped up the European or the Europe Free Freedom Convoy. So that'll be that'll be a very interesting thing. Will the European governments follow the Trudeau government's lead and freeze bank accounts of these, you know, evil truckers, farmers, and others trying to protest for their freedoms. Very interesting stuff happening. I'll, I'll let you know the developments as they happen because it seems very interesting. And I'll let you know if there's more contagion as well. Riley says, a woman in Langley goes off on mass immigration. Trudeau keeps bringing all these people in and there's no housing. The food banks are dry. It's absolutely insane. One of the things I noted before when um, Trump was controversial if he made a good point or if he like made peace in the middle east or something like that you know things like that right the things that he did um people would say listen i hate trump or trump isn't legitimate or blah 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 trump's bad they they'd couch their whatever they were going to say but he did you know make this accomplishment the economy is pretty good you know blah 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 whatever it is right all of these things are true this woman is doing the exactly the same thing with the immigrant thing, the only acceptable position to have in Canada is to be radically pro-immigration. If you are not enthusiastic about the complete destruction of Canada, then they don't they don't want to hear your opinion about it, right? So this woman starts. She says, "You know, it's really wonderful that we, we're bringing in all these people, but here we go." The government can address the housing affordability crisis in Canada. And I think the the government is bringing in immigrants and refugees, which I think is wonderful and great. But you know what? We don't have the infrastructure. And I say, you know, put a hold and get houses built for these people. We're getting tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people coming in the past five, ten years, and there's no place to live. Where are these people going to live? Trudeau keeps bringing all these people in, and there's no housing, and and the food banks are dry. There's nobody giving to food banks. He brings these people in, and they don't have jobs. They don't have. So how are they going to live without housing and without jobs to buy groceries? Like, it's just absolutely insane. And it doesn't take a space rocket scientist to figure that out. My parents came as immigrants. My father came in 1928. That right the next day he started his job. He had a job to come to. He came from Croatia. Now these people come here. They don't have a house to come to. They don't have groceries. They don't have a job. They don't have language skills. Like even learning a language is a is a problem. It's so expensive. Nothing seems to be in order. There's there's so much chaos and disruption in this country now. It's just one thing after another. It just gets worse as every day that goes on. It's just worse and worse. And and I think Trudeau with all all his um, immorality and all his problems, I think he has to give up. <laughs> I don't know what she means by give up. I would like him to give Yes, I would like him to give up too. He needs to give up. <laughs> but I think it's very funny when somebody's like, oh yeah, it's super great that we're bringing in all these immigrants, but like, hold on, let me go off on a minute and a half long tangent about how terrible this is and like how idiotic the prime minister who allowed this to happen is. So yeah, it's super great. What's great about it? Um, nothing. Nothing is great about it. Nothing at all. Here's Pierre Polyev promising that he'll do exactly the same thing. He wants to stop the deportations and he wants to bring in immigrants because don't you know we have a, a labor shortage in Canada, says Pierre Polyev. I believe this is recent, although I don't know how recent he's in. He's in short, like he's got a, a no suit jacket on. They're outside. There's leaves on the trees. So probably this fall, right? Probably September, maybe August, September. Um, recent enough to be part of part of the part of the overall conversation. He's only just won the leadership, right? So presumably, until I hear different, this is in play. I don't think Mr. Polyev is planning on reducing immigration whatsoever. In fact, I think he wants to expand it and he wants to expand it by building a whole lot of houses, high rises with lots of apartments in it. So there's lots of volume. So you can bring lots of people. I think that's the plan here. 15 minute cities. Here we go. The students to get better, accurate, real admission letters in the beginning. And then we wouldn't be in this mess here today. And then four years later, 
They come along and say that they're going to uh, that the Trudeau government is going to kick the students out of Canada. The solution is obvious: end the deportations, allow everyone who applied honestly but who was defrauded to continue to keep their work or study permit, and allow them to apply just like everyone else to become permanent residents. That's what I'm calling for: stop the deportations. Listen, we have a worker shortage in Canada. We have a demographic problem. Our population is too old. We need 700 young people. We need 700 young people to work in our factories, in our hospitals, in our shopping centers, driving truck, being accountants, lawyers, doctors. We need these workers in our country. It makes no sense for Canada to send them back when they could stay here and earn powerful paychecks and raise their families in peace. So, shame on Justin Trudeau for trying to deport these wonderful students. Stop the deportations. Keep the, the students here. Allow them to apply just like everyone else for permanent residency. The Conservatives will continue to fight for the students. Slide the letters on the... So there you go. That's Pierre Polyev's Conservative Party, which is proposing the same policies as Mr. Trudeau's Liberal Party. Elon Musk is noticing this data bit and he's he, data hazard says at current rates we can expect over 12 million encounters in the first term of joe biden's pres presidency that's nearly as much as the preceding three terms combined so trump and obama um and obama had two and trump had one so that's a lot of years right and in one term biden has let in 12 million illegal immigrants in the united states and What's going on in Canada is doing is the same thing. They voted against Brexit in the UK because they were being flooded by people who were overwhelming their systems there, especially the NHS, which is a disaster right now, the national health care system. Disaster, absolute disaster right now. It's not quite as bad as Canada, but Canada's exceptionally bad. Um, and the NHS was better than Canada's was, I think, 10 years ago. I think 10 years ago, it was just like it was at the peak. It was peak operationally but it was spread too thin and it was the cracks were showing right and, and it was on the way down um so i think that maybe i'm maybe i'm incorrect about that but to listen to my relatives people were able to find care then and less able to find care now although you know it's the same kind of um people are very it's almost patriotic about their healthcare system regardless of the reality of it they will fight that their healthcare system is you know okay because I think we spend so much money on it. It's like, if, if you spent that much money on something else, you'd have to justify that it's, you know, it's at least pretty good, right? Like we spend a lot of money on healthcare, a lot of money. How much of the taxes go to healthcare? What percentage? And how much of your paycheck goes to taxes? How much, if you make $100,000, how much is your take home, right? It's, it's like 60,000, 50,000, 60,000, 40, you paid $40,000 in taxes. How much of that goes to healthcare? Um, anyway, regardless, there's a lot of people coming in and they're not helping anything. They're, they're putting a strain on the system. And fundamentally, yesterday, um, Elon Musk is pointing out that if uh, just a small percentage of the world moves to the United States, they'd have to double housing, and that's impossible. And he says it so much more eloquently than I do. It's just plainly impossible. Like, it's not, it's not going to happen, right? Like, you can increase 20%. Sure, you can maybe squeeze 25% for a year or so, right? But you can't just double housing to meet this demand for a million immigrants every year. And don't you think that's weird that Joe Biden's doing what he's doing in his first term, a million immigrants every year, and we are on track for uh, under that, two million, if he's got four million a year, four, eight, 12, right? For the first three years, and he's got the last year left now. Um, if he's got four million a year and, and Trudeau's got 1.5 to 2 million a year, like, for a population the size of Canada, that's hugely impactful. I wonder if I would, percentage-wise, Canada is probably worse, right? If you look at percentage-wise for population percentage and the number of people it in, Canada is probably eyebrow-raisingly worse. Here is a video sent to me by a, a, a viewer yesterday, and this guy, Market Mania. I, I follow him on Twitter too, but like it, Twitter's kind of it's almost useless now. It's not useless because I still use it, but it is difficult to see even people that you follow the following tab is kind of full of old tweets it's really weird and the for you tab is just a nightmare of garbage tweets so i don't go there 
anyway, it's interesting. X is growing and being weird again. Uh, but this guy does good work and he's talking about the fires in Canadian pre-sale homes. And this is a 10 minute video and it is worth watching. And I'm just gonna show you the first minute where he says, you've got to wake up about this. This is desperation. At the end, he concludes that the people we're bringing here in their country, lighting the thing on fire would be a way to get out of the deal. And that's just run of the mill. Like that's just what happens when you kind of F around, you find out, right? So here is, here is Market Mania, just a little clip. Here we go. You need to read between the lines here because this is desperation. This is pure desperation. People setting homes on fire to get out of deals is absolutely crazy. The Canadian housing market is crashing so hard that people are burning down their homes. Now, we covered this before, but the situation has got a lot worse and now even the mainstream media is covering it and shedding some light on what is going on here. So we're going to go through some of the videos on what exactly is happening and see what is going on here. So Canadian real estate arson may rise as economy slows warns insurer. And just think about that for a second, because the economy right now, it's going to get a lot worse. So this is just going to increase as we... Well, I mean, we don't have to... We don't have to say that. I mean, we might just bring it about if we start talking about how the economy is going to get a lot worse and have a chuckle about it. I mean, let's hope that we're at the bottom here. Chief. Hello everyone, thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.